Hello and welcome to another episode of Love is a Battlefield, the DV podcast. My name is Tilly Moore and this is episode 23, Insecure Men Are Dangerous. Welcome to another episode of me running my mouth and having no really professional content. That's how I roll. So what is today about? Basically, it says it in the title, but let's explore it. It's something none of us knew like years and years ago, but now we've really come to find, oh, that's the issue. So when we're describing like what is an abuser, what is the kind of man who would be inclined to raise a hand to a woman, then we're looking at certain types. And I have gone through that before. I've talked about narcissists. But now we're just looking at insecure little bitches and how they can be very dangerous. So there is a common thing that says an insecure, uh, insecure, insecure man is very dangerous, but an insecure woman is very vulnerable to the predators that are, you know, the insecure men. So an insecure man cheats, an insecure man hits, cheats, manipulates, puts down, is usually a misogynist. Why? Why is it? Why does insecurity make men be turned into absolutely dangerous, horrible assholes and women are like the opposite? So where do we start with that? So let's start with what it feels like to be a woman. <laughs> Let me tell you, 99% of you being a woman, what it feels like to be a woman. Let's go, girls. Uh, <laughs> to feel shit. Like, oh, periods, am I right? Oh, my goodness. Like, let's... And bras. Oh. Anyway, what does it feel like to be an insecure woman? So as any woman out there who has ever felt insecure for any reason knows when we feel insecure, we kind of internalize this whole self-hate thing. We feel shy. We feel a bit withdrawn. We're not as confident. We think, just say it's a physical insecurity, like you don't feel good about some part of your body or the way you look. You're not going to walk out there all strutting and positive and standing up straight, like, I love myself, you know, chin up in the air, confidently speaking to everyone with your whole chest. You're going to be a little withdrawn, a little bit unsure of yourself, looking around like, oh, do I fit in here? So women seem to internalize. When we are insecure, we, I think it's like the whole patriarchy has taught us, like, if you're not up to scratch, woman, like, if you are not perfection, then you are not worthy to society. And also the whole, you're just here for breeding is such a theme through patriarchy and such a theme I grew up with. Like you are here to be a mum. So you are here to please a man because that's how you become a mum. That's what we were taught. And so we devalue ourselves. If we're feeling insecure about absolutely anything about ourselves, even in career, something completely separate from all of that, If you're not feeling confident what you're doing at work, like if you have to go in and talk to the boss about a pay rise, are you going to stomp in there with your whole chest being like, I know my worth? Or are you going to be a bit, "Um, I'm hoping like you could, you know, maybe give me like this or something. Women tend to retreat because it's what, how we were raised. It's patriarchy. It's not an individual thing. It's just how we've all been shaped. So when we're insecure, we're, restricting ourselves we're like pulling in a bit whereas men when men are insecure it's a completely different story I think because men have been raised by the patriarchy like you are the leader you are the strength you are amazing you are the king you are so strong women are weak women are pathetic they're just here to make babies and serve you you are amazing so when they're feeling a little bit insecure like "Mm, I don't know like I'm not really feeling good about myself right now They've still been fed by the patriarchy, by society, that they are so much better than women and they are the women are here to serve them. So what does a man do to fill that void? So for a man, it's about ego. Ego is what they want to fill when they're feeling insecure. So men thinking women are here to serve them, they have their beautiful, loving, adorable other half, either a wife a girlfriend, a fiance, a partner of some sort, 
and they will, or oh, they could be our beautiful LGBTQI people, and they could have a husband. Mm-hmm. You can have anything, anyone or anything, but I'm just talking about the male psyche as it was with the patriarchy. And I feel like gay men are beyond the patriarchy. I feel like they have just cracked that seal open and they're just like, we are not about this. We are not looking down on women like they're pieces of trash. I just feel like gay men are above it. I don't know. I just don't think that they're like as misogynistic. I feel like they're smarter than that. Like they've cracked the code. They're not still blubbery little toddlers going, women are here, give me head jobs and make me feel good. They're like really intelligent and they're like, I am here to live my best life with a man's and I love my girls. There's, I mean, there's trash men everywhere, but I just, I just don't feel like they're like that misogynistic. I feel like there's a lot, a lot of closeted misogynistic men, toddler brained little, I'm going to cheat on a woman who treats me good. Like pieces of crap who beat up women. I feel like a lot of them are in the closet because they're whole, oh, I'm doing to be gay because it's bad because they're stupid. But I just, I just give more credit to our LGBTQI peeps. More credit. Anyway, <laughs> none of that made sense. As I said, running my mouth. But disclaimer, that was not saying anything. Actually, I'm having an episode about LGBTQI domestic violence coming up at some stage. I've been planning. So my mindless chatter then was not discrediting any domestic violence and there is quite a lot of domestic violence that is experienced in the LGBTQI community. It was more a psychological observation comparing, say, a gay man to a straight, misogynistic, redneck, homophobic man, you know, those two types. But definitely acknowledging DV happens to all people, shapes and sizes. All right, so back to insecure men. They are more, one step one, they are more likely to cheat. And for us, that does not make sense. It does not compute in our brains because we think if we're feeling down on ourselves, we're not pursuing someone else romantically because we're kind of feeling like, oh, I'm not good. Whereas men are taught by the patriarchy from a very young age, women are here to serve you, they're below you. Women are here to fill you up, to boost your ego. They are here to provide a service. And they have a beautiful, loving, amazing fiancé, partner, girlfriend, something at home. And they go, hmm, I'm feeling a bit insecure. She is feeding my ego. She is filling me up. She's making me feel amazing. She's serving me because mm, patriarchy, yay. But I want more. I need more because I'm feeling insecure. I need more. So I'm going to go to another source. I need, I'm going to get another woman, cheat on this woman, betray her, destroy her trust, deceive her, lie to her and get this other woman so she can feed my ego too because so then I have two sources of ego feeling and I'm getting double the ego feeling because I'm feeling insecure that's how their brains work it took me ages to realize that insecure men cheat because in my brain it made no sense at all that an insecure person would go and pursue sexual relations with someone else that seems like something someone who's quite confident and sure of themselves would do. And there's also that thing where when men cheat, they they don't have a, they're not cheating because that girl's better than you. You know how girls like, oh, you cheated on a girl, she's not as pretty as me. They always say that because the men aren't looking, they're not cheating on someone because they want someone better, because they can't get anyone better. They just want someone to fill their tank. They're like an empty car with an empty gas tank. And they just want someone to fill it. Fill my ego, biatch, because the patriarch has told them that's what women do. You're feeling down on yourself. Get yourself a side piece so that your main piece doesn't have to. I mean, your main piece is probably treating you a lot better than you're treating them and building your ego up sufficiently. But get a side piece because that's what women do. They provide a service. And that's one of the things insecure men do too. Insecure men are aggressive. So we've all heard, okay, I'm not going to assume we've all heard. Have you heard of short man syndrome? Short man, and I've noticed it in women as well, short people syndrome is this psychological kind of 
phenomena that short people are aggressive. I have noticed this is hashtag fact. Okay, like any generalization, it's a generalization. Hashtag not all short people. But I do know, and when I think of the most aggressive woman I've known in my life, she is tiny. When I think of the most aggressive men I've come across in my life, there's a lot more to pick up, like she, because there was one. The men, I think, a, but a lot more. But yeah, th- there were some short ones. There were some really nice short ones, but there was a lot short. So it's that stereotype of that aggressive short man. He goes to the gym to get muscles because he feels he's not good enough. But this is patriarchy. Patriarchy has told that man, hey, you're short, therefore you're not masculine, you're not enough. So it's all patriarchy still that's the fault, that's to blame for this. So they're feeling like I'm not enough because I'm not the tall, dark, handsome. I'm not the tall, big, strong man that I've been told by the patriarchy I need to be. They're not realizing that they actually have value being short. Instead of, you know, getting you know, therapy hello, get therapy. No, they tend to get aggressive. They are very aggressive. They're very defensive. I've actually talked to a short person about this because they were being, you know, aggressive. And I've talked to them about how the tall people, like a lot of tall men and women that I've met, I like that whole gentle giants. Have you heard of that expression? Gentle giants. I find generally there's a lot of tall people who are very sweet, very gentle. Because we we kind of stand under, we kind of stand over people. And so we see the world. We don't, I don't know, we're just people, we're like normal. And then the short people feel like they have to make up for something. They feel like they're missing out on something, like the air up here is better. I'm telling you, the air up here isn't that different. <laughs> but they they have this whole aggression thing. So short man syndrome, oh, I used to work in this place where this guy who was in charge suffered from short man syndrome, plus, 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 like so much. And he had this sidekick who was his like second, like deputy person who also had short man syndrome. And you should have seen this pair. We had the most beautiful elderly ladies who worked there and these insecure men. And I think they're in their thirties and forties at this stage, walked around, like strutted. And they both went to the gym and they strutted around like, we are the leaders everyone will do as we say and like we're all working everyone's working they're doing their job but they went and got little ego hits of people they would put people down they would move people into another area of this place we were working to sort of show dominance and like look what I can do they would force pregnant women to lift heavy things on purpose until they got a letter from the doctor so I had learned from several pregnant women who worked there that when they announced they were pregnant, they were like, well, until the doctor specifies this, 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 this in a letter, we're going to make you and force you to do these physical things that could harm you just to show our power over you. I had witnessed, there was a woman, this is full summer, full summer heat. She was huge. She was due in like a week or something about to pop. They refused to put her in the job where you can sit. There was one job that women who got pregnant often got to do because they could sit and they were safer and they resented. These were misogynistic pigs. They resented women when they got to go in that role. And this woman had not got the right letter with the right wording to go around their little power and control kick. So she was forced to do manual labor to the full extent, the whole pregnancy. And she was so, so heavily pregnant. This is summer in an unair conditioned building. And she was doing something physical. Now I had a machine that I could, like she could use or I could use. Either one of us could use, depends on who picked it up first. And I had a machine and I went up to her, parked it next to her, said, take my machine. I will do the manual version of what you're doing right now. We're doing the same job, only you can do it two ways. You can do it manual or you can do it with the machine. The machine you get to sort of ride on. It makes things, I'm not even going to tell you what we were doing, like, cause that would just waste a lot of time, but the machine made it easier for her. 
she still shouldn't have been up and about. Like I really felt for her, but she needed to work to get money. Like these men, and you know what they did with their audacity. And me then, like snaps to me. I wasn't a feminist, and I didn't know about feminism. <laughs> couldn't even see. I couldn't even say the word back then. I didn't even know anything about that. I hadn't gone through this major divi divi divi. I can speak good English. I hadn't gone through this major DV. I had gone through abuse and DV and sort of like lots of situations, but I had not gone through the severe one where I nearly died and I wasn't a feminist. I didn't even know much about it then. However, every woman knows. Like every, you're a woman. You've lived here. You've put up with crap your whole life. Like there's some things you know. So get this. These pieces of human freaking excrement insecure as all fuck little men with big muscles so they could have killed me march up to me and say did you give that machine to her and I'm like yeah have you seen her she's about to pop and they said well you're swapping back and I said excuse me because there was no reason there was no reason that benefited the company like we were doing the exact same job. You can either do it A or B. And it didn't matter who did A or B. Work, and I was like, workplace health and safety. He's like, but she didn't have the letter that said the specific word so we can do what we want. And I said, yeah, it's called respect for women. No, I refuse to take that back. Give her the machine. That's disgusting. And I walked away and they shut up, which is really weird because these men <laughs> did not back down. Like these men threatened to punch elderly women once when someone was doing something in the workplace, they didn't know who was doing it. So they're like, we're going to punch. And they threatened to like hit all the people and all these women. And <laughs> they were so aggressive and so insecure. And they, then I was pregnant and I knew, you know what I did? Day freaking dot. I found out I was pregnant. I made an appointment with the doctor. I got into that doctor quick, freaking smart. I got a letter and I had known from like three pregnant women or more what these men did. So I got a letter. I crossed every T. I dotted every I and made sure it specified this. And the doctor, I first, I had to go to two doctors. The first one I went to said, I refuse to do that. He said, that's disgusting if the workplace is doing that. I refuse to have to write each and every sentence out to please these creepy men like clearly it's workplace health and safety clearly if you have the option for pregnant women to do this other job you're going to allow that and I'm like they intentionally push the pregnant women to do that to show their power and control and it's sick and so I actually can't recall if I no, I actually did have to go to another doctor so I went to this other doctor and he's like oh yeah you tell me tell me what to write. He's like, that's disgusting. Tell me what to write. So we wrote, can't do this, can't do this, blah, 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 blah. Can do this, can do that, blah, blah. And the workplace was set up that there was so much I could do and so much that I wanted to do what so many pregnant women before me had done. But these men got jealous. They're like, these women are getting pregnant. And so they're allowed to just sit down. Like the job you did, if you were sitting, was you were running the entire shift. You were running the whole place that we worked in, you, it was nonstop. It was thinking on your feet. To, well, you weren't on your feet, you're on your butt. But you know what I mean? Like, do, 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 like you had to use your brain, you had to do this, you had to do that. But like, it was, it was really good. Like for my ADHD loved it because it was just go, 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 go on a computer. Like you were running the workplace, you were managing things, you were telling people what to, like, it's, it took brains and they really did need a woman in that job. Like, I'm sure men could do it too, but it was just like, it wasn't easy. No one was sitting on their butt doing nothing. Like you had to be trained in that job and they were just being really jealous and weird about it. And it was a whole power and control thing. And these men all had exes who they had che treated bad. They cheated on their exes and I believe were violent to them. Like they were very not nice humans and so I proudly brought that letter in and they were like fine tooth comb as a group, like looking over it. They could not find a way around it. 
So, oh, they tried. <laughs> you know what they did? Oh, it's so funny. There was this little box that was separate to the whole building. <laughs> and they're like, go there. And I'm like, what do I do? They're like, oh, a truck will come in and you just tell the truck like, oh, what's your code? And then you write it down and then that's it. And I, and, and I'm like, what else do I do? They're like, that's it. And I kept feeling like I'm meant to be doing something. Cause I'm always in jobs where I work, 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 work. And so basically I'm just in this box, just sitting in a box, doing nothing, living my best life. If only we had smartphones in. Oh, we did have mobiles, but you could only text or call and you could take a picture, but it was very, very blurry and very horrible. And you could only keep like a handful of them on your device. So if we had the internet or like a smartphone or something really cool, we, the internet had been invented, but you know, no smartphones or anything. So I was just sitting and I was kind of not sure about what I was meant to be doing. So I was a bit weird, like, but I just sat and I was like, they thought that, look, we're showing her. She thought she'd get to sit in this chair, but we're putting her there. Mate, that was a freaking blessed. Like, it was so good. I was like, just sitting, living my best life. Like, I got like two trucks a shift and trucks stopped coming at a certain time. So I just sat. Oh, it was glorious. It was great. And they thought, huh, we showed her. And I'm like, mate. That's the, it's within the doctor's letter. I'm happy. I'm safe. I'm not getting injured. You're not intentionally putting me in a situation that injures me or my baby. Like I am good. I am good. I am fine. And in fact, you put me in the most low stress environment in the world. Like it's such a blessing. So they still tried. They still tried and it didn't upset me at all. I was happy to sort of do whatever. And yeah, I ended up leaving and going back to nursing. Ah. But that brings us back to like aggression, insecure men, men who don't think they're enough because patriarchy has told them, oh, if you're not X, Y, Z, if you're not tall, if you're not this, if you're not whatever, they're not enough. So insecure men can be very aggressive because they are projecting instead of therapy. So my advice to men, therapy, instead of therapy, they're just projecting this pain and anger. And you find men who use the gym as an addiction are very dangerous. They're not dangerous as in walking down the street that, you know, that kind of danger. They're dangerous in relationships. They're dangerous in so many other ways. They're dangerous if you harm their fragile ego. So their egos are fragile because they haven't had therapy and they need it. Like there's something not right. And a lot of people these days are using gym and all that different types of gym kind of workout stuff as an addiction. Any addiction is not healthy and it's us medicating ourselves. And we all do it. We all do all different types of things and no hate on people. Like you got to pick your thing. You got to pick the thing that your brain thrives off when you, you know, when you need therapy and when you aren't medicating yourself with medication. Like we all do these things. No hate. But they think they're a hero. You know, the wife is at home with the kids while he serves himself and has me time in the gym. And he comes home and goes, I'm a hero. Oh, you're getting fat but never allows her to go to the gym because he's a hero. There are so many people in that mentality right now that, oh, if I go to the gym and I work out, I am a hero. You are all failures. I'm a hero. Look at me. And it's like, it is a privilege to go to the gym. It is a privilege to have that time for yourself, to have the money for yourself, to not have to look after kids and and be able to do that. It is a privilege enjoy it, embrace it, know that it is for you. It's for yourself. You're not serving anyone or anything. You're not helping the world be a better place. You're, you do it. It's for you. And if you do have a partner, see if you can help them have time to do something for themselves as well, maybe. Hmm. But a lot of people, and I love, I used to go to this gym. I absolutely loved it. It was so cool, but I had to stop going when someone got out of prison and I had to run away and be safe away far 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 away from this human being but that gym was epic and amazing and I really liked going but I appreciated it I appreciated it was me time it was for me and I didn't strut around like I'm a hero because you're not a hero you're not helping anyone like go to a hospital and save a life like go and do some charity work like 
you're not <laughs> you're not that cool. But you just see those insecure men go to the gym like, oh, look at me. I just lifted something. It's like, and who did that help? You. And that's cool. It helped you. That's awesome. But they project that at people and they're so angry. And so if you meet a man who is short, who's angry, a lot of aggression, who's like, oh, you're not like other women. Other women are psycho. All my exes are psycho. They're bitches. You're cool. Just know you're going to be the next psycho bitch and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. He's going to call you those names because he's going to treat you like crap. You're going to say, hm, I'm not standing for this. And then he's going to go, oh, psycho bitch. It's not you. So insecure men, if they're sh- So a risk factor, lots of tattoos, short, goes to the gym a lot, like a lot. Thinks he's a hero, talks down to women, hates gay people, homophobic, misogynistic, redneck, piece of crap. Um, and is very angry, like very walk on eggshells, angry. They're probably very dangerous people. Now, tattoos, great. Go in the gym, great. Short, love a short king. We love a short king. There are so many short kings. And by short king, we mean a man who's short, but hasn't been brainwashed by this stupid misogynistic bullshit patriarchy that they are any less than anything. They're secure in themselves. Secure, not insecure, not the point of this whole episode. They're not insecure. They're secure in themselves. So there, there is nothing wrong with a short man. Do not think that. There is nothing wrong with tattoos. There is nothing wrong with going to the gym. There's nothing wrong with going to the gym a lot if you're trying to like get them gains, y'all. But being humble, being beautiful and loving and a real human being and not just walk, people around you walking on eggshells like you're just going to snap at any time. All we can say is... Men, men, man, man. If you're feeling insecure, like get some therapy. Like we all need therapy. Everyone needs therapy. And insecure women, if you're feeling insecure, just know that you're going to be vulnerable. You're like got a target on your back. Like these insecure men, like they just see insecure women like "Mm, she doesn't think she's good enough. All right. Great. Suits me well. They target women who are insecure, who have empathy for others, who care for others, who have been raised by the patriarchal bullshit that they need a man, that they have to get married, have babies, all that kind of stuff, that they're nothing without a man. Prime targets. One of the biggest, most popular careers of a woman who's been through domestic violence is nursing because and teaching. Empathy, caring for others, serving others. Uh, I mean, every single career. There's a woman in every career. I can guarantee you has gone for UGV. I mean, one in like, they say one in three. <laughs> it's not really one in two. No. <laughs> Hashtag make up your stats. <laughs> but in all seriousness, there is an article. There's a lot of articles on this subject, actually, by LiveScience.com called Insecure Men May Be More Prone to Violence. Although it's awfully often assumed that males who feel they are manly men are more likely to engage in violence than those who are less concerned about their masculinity, men who feel they don't meet perceived masculine gender norms are str- and are stressed about it may be equally prone to violent acts. A new study finds research, it's all about research. You're going to quote facts, you want research-based evidence. Research has found that men who feel they are full short of society's macho man standards and are unhappy about it, may be more likely to commit violent assaults using weapons, I don't know why they specified weapons, because it was part of the study, than men who are comfortable with their masculinity. So it just goes on to sort of repeat that and talk about aggressive, hypersexual, that men like feel like being aggressive and hypersexual is being macho and therefore they're trying to fit in these stereotypes. Basically the patriarchy is filled these in- men, insecure men, with this idea that They've got to be this kind of macho, so they're overcompensating. And if they're short or if they're – there's something about them that they don't think is macho and fitting this image and they're already insecure and they don't have any kind of mental health history or trauma history or anything like that, they're going to be pretty dangerous because they're going to be projecting a lot of this. And it's it's patriarchy's to blame. But who started patriarchy? Don't look at me. I'm a woman. I mean, who started it? Who ran society for like ever? Who ran society? Men. Who ran society? Men. And now they're like, oh, we taught each other that we needed to be macho. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. I think they did that because they were trying to differentiate themselves against women. Like, yeah, men are macho, so we're better than you. 
And so by saying men are macho, men are macho, what they're really saying to other men is, yeah, if you're a man, you're macho. I think initially they were just using that whole macho image to sort of put women down, put women in their place, but they didn't realise they were actually telling other men that you're not a man unless you're macho. So being in trying to control women and treat them like crap and stand above them and go, oh, macho men, we're so good, you actually put yourselves down and made yourselves even more dangerous. It's like this whole kind of loop of just bullshit. <laughs> Oh, hello. I found an article. Sorry, completely off topic. Just like I was just Googling about my insecure men and this came up. An article by news.com.au saying that Anthony Albanese, that is the leader of Australia, we call our leader a prime minister, we don't have a president, says there's no time to waste on violence against women. It says prime minister has called for urgent action after an alarming spike in the number of women killed by domestic violence. Like I'm telling you, down here, because, you know, hashtag Southern Hemisphere, so, women, so many women are dying. Like six last week, 66 in such a whatever period. Like the shooting stats from like school shootings and stuff like that in America used to shock us. We'd be like, oh, get rid of your guns. But over here, our stats of domestic violence have just gone up, 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 up. Women are dropping like flies. Like, okay, that sounds really bad. Like, oh, but I was one of them that nearly dropped like a fly, like literally. So... It's really, really, really bad. Like our stats in Australia, I am so ashamed. And then we have shows like Love Island. We have like UK people come on and I'm like cringing going, oh, who's watching this? Like because the Australian men on there have all these misogynistic values and the UK women are like, why are they talking down to us like this? Why are they treating us like this? Like there's a lot of narcissism and stuff. Whereas I don't see that on other ones. You do see it now and then, but I don't see it on other ones. Like Australia just has this culture of misogyny and and me nearly dying was not rare. Like women are, there's an, an epidemic at the moment, or is it called pandemic? No, that's when it's COVID. An epidemic. <laughs> She's smart. She is smart girl. There is an epidemic at the moment of women being murdered each and every day. Like this is serious, being murdered in Australia, and it is really bad. And there's an article saying that our prime minister finally finally has spoken out because he's just told like the stats and he's just like what like every day and they've been stopped they have stopped putting it on the news because they don't want the public to know how bad it is because the public might get upset and they might you know the media is quite controlled by government if you didn't know that they don't they're not allowed to talk about so many crimes like there's a lot of silencing on stuff because they have to give this whole image that we're protected our government's protecting us so they've they've actually stopped uh re reporting on deaths because if they reported on each death of a woman in domestic violence they would have reported every night of the week last week another death and i feel like they should be doing that and i don't know how they're silenced by the government, but there is some silence happening there. But the stats are still there. The stats are, you've got to, you've got to look hard to find them. But finally, our prime minister has said enough's enough. And I just want to find a quote in there. Like, what has he actually said? Okay, so I just stopped, paused then for a bit and read it. Ah, politicians. <laughs> you, you know, I read it and then I'm like highly, very disappointed. He actually said... It's not just the job of governments. Like he, he's taken the responsibility of the literal government of Australia and said changing the attitudes about in inequality and discrimination and objectifying women and disregarding consent is everyone's responsibility. So he's just taken the heat of himself. Like why am I not shocked? Like it's it's not my fault. Like, like you could like encourage the media to report on every single death. Like you could... Uh, have higher sentences or that you could build more prisons. We need more prisons. Like they are full. They are full. I mean, there's one in there now who did some things to me. <laughs> However, he did say this men in particular have to step up and male leaders have an opportunity to champion change and create the conditions that prevent violence, abuse, discrimination, and harassment. He says his government has taken immediate and practical steps to support victims of domestic violence, but acknowledged there was still a long way to go. Yeah, you're right about the long way to go. Uh, he says, it says figures show one woman dies every 14 days. Um, we've had six in the last, like there was a seven day period, I think from around Friday, someone was reporting six had died in the seven days before that. 
and now they say one every two weeks. Uh, there's been 66 already this year, and that was a few weeks ago. So the year's not like no to start stuff. They're higher. They get they're higher and they're getting higher every day. It's so weird. Like we have this feminism. Like society's changing. Men are resisting that change resisting the whole well I'm not respecting you you're not a person I've been taught that you are here to serve me well I'm going to be violent and I'm going to kill you because you're not fulfilling your job like men are resisting seeing us as human beings they're resisting that change and they're being very violent about it whereas we're here thinking oh no feminism will educate them they'll like love us and treat us like people and we'll love them back like we always have done like we're just gonna it's gonna be beautiful but there is this resistance and with change comes resistance but what like what like what pieces of crap hit women and children and stuff these days and like rape people and pedophiles and like get therapy, (laughs) therapy far out. Enough is a freaking enough. Like, you know, what happened to me knowing that that has happened to even one other person is absolutely soul crushing. You know, when it happens to yourself, you're like, yeah, whatever. It's just me. You know, we have that whole thing that we're like, you know, hashtag insecure women, like we're nothing. But, uh, but like when it happens to other people, you're just like, no, no, that's bullshit. Uh, this was like posted two days ago and they're like, oh, this place says 53 women since the start of the year. Yet a lady posted on TikTok the other day that it's 66 women because of the amount of women that have been lost just in the last like week or two. And it's just like, what the hell are you guys doing? Stop killing us. There's actually a petition. I've put a link to it in my TikTok where I talked about, fuck, what I talk about? Trolls. <laughs> and it's really hard to click the link. I don't know why I pressed stop then. I just pressed stop <laughs> while I was talking mid-sentence. Um, so what I got the link from a TikTok, so I had to just like hold it down, press copy, paste it in notes, and then cut out like the actual link part and go in that. And it's a petition saying, from Australian women, men, please stop killing us. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's a voice and a voice in silence, like silence enables and voices speak. And I came up with this amazing quote the other day. You ready? Drum roll. (laughs) Such a knob. Um, The quote was, those the most against feminism are those that benefit the most from misogyny. Let that sit and sizzle. Let that sit for a minute. Let that just marinade in the juices in the pan let's have this analogy go way too far and now you're thinking about cooking meat in a pan okay so that's enough i'm obviously just lost the plot and (laughs) never had it but thanks for acknowledging that i might have i have just finished that article and the domestic violence group they reach out to is just like well there are no services and that's true they have run out of services for women um shelters and other services, counselling, anything that helps women get away from domestic violence, all those services are really underfunded. And so that's their response to him just saying a few words because it happened to be like International Day of Women or Violence Against Women or something. Like I don't even acknowledge those days because they're just piss poor like things like saying, oh, if we have a day, you're going to feel better about it. Like shut up, take action, do something. Personally, I think Australia needs more prisons. We have a lot less prisons in America, although we do have Medicare and Centrelink. So you can go to a hospital if you need help and sometimes you come out okay. (laughs) You get what you pay for. But, (laughs) like, we have hospitals. You can access them. Like, what is happening in America is actually heartbreaking with that whole thing. So we are very blessed in that regard. However, it would be good to have some more prisons and actually put some of these people... I am such a rare case and it's only because as a judge said uh, at one stage during my whole um all the court cases that they had to have for it they said um domestic homicide bordering on domestic homicide and you know I was seconds away like near-death experience vibes like that's you know so it, and everything that was done all the psycho stuff and all the stalking and all the creepiness and all the manipulation of the police and of everyone around them it was just this person is like I was told by police so much like this person is dangerous this isn't some this isn't some little bogan angry boy that never got therapy that's just lashing out and has like anger management issues this is a calculated psychopath this is the words of many police officers I spoke to and they were just like this person is so dangerous 
because the danger comes in the fact that how their brain works and what they're actually capable of and also the fact that you know their physical strength and all this stuff like that but anyway very lucky still still uh if i had put a foot wrong he would have tried to get anything against me he would have as i've said before he would have ever heard at me he would have tried anything like if i lifted one finger if i threw something at him he would have completely twisted the whole thing to be like she's abusive but i knew i switched on luckily i switched on early in the piece and you do not receive react do not respond do not give him what he's desperately trying to get to justify this addiction he has to violence that he's clearly not planning on stopping no matter who the victim or target or what it's just like he's just relentless and extremely dangerous and when i was saying all those do nots i wanted to say do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars but like don't don't do what you gotta do man if i wasn't switched on like if i was not switched on he was trying everything to destroy me like very lucky anyway i've talked about this before i was here to talk about insecure men so one, no hate to men who go to the gym. I love the gym. I went to the gym. Gym is good. It's more like people who go there and like have this whole aggression about it, have this whole hero complex, have this whole like talking down to people who don't or to people who aren't getting them gains as much as them, like seeing people less than them, like seeing it as an ego thing or competition, like not just seeing it as, wow, I'm really lucky. I get to go here and get healthy. I feel really good afterwards, you know. You know, you know the types. So love the gym. Two, tattoos. Love tattoos. Don't love them on people who do bad things. <laughs> but oh, there's so many cool tattoos out there. And um, because I, th- I think I mentioned some, in, like a short man with tattoos. Or something. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just describing people I've met in my life. And um, there are some freaking beautiful people with tattoos. Absolutely freaking phenomenal. What's another thing I said? Short men. We love a short king. We love a short king. And there are so many adorable short men out there. Like, I'm thinking of some, but I just don't want to say their names. Like, celebrities and stuff. But so many beautiful ones. There's just a majority, because the patriarchy has told them about this macho man thing, that sort of project that and they become quite aggressive and their ego is quite fragile and... All we have to say is therapy to them. And what we say to the short kings is you're a king. We love you. We ship you. But um, therapy to those that are quite aggressive with short man syndrome. And what else do I talk about? Uh, the gays. love the gays. The girls and the gays. Love them. Uh, what else do we talk about? <laughs> Just like summarizing. Make sure I haven't offended anyone because I run my mouth. So what we say to men in the big finale of this episode is you don't have to be macho you don't have to stand over anyone you don't have to control anyone you can be vulnerable you can be what insecure toxic men call what do they call them a simp they they do that because they're trying to make other men feel bad about being nice to women because they're like messed up themselves you can get therapy and be proud of it you know be you know what turn a woman on you know how there's, okay, there's two men. There's one man walking out of the gym. He's proud. He's a hero. He's just done a workout. He's got them gains. He's got, he's lifted like a new record, personal best. And he's feeling like the king of the world. And then there's a man walking out of the psychologist's office next to the gym. And he's feeling like, oh no, that was all right. I feel good. You know which one the women are like. Mm. Man's just came out psychologist. He's feeling good. He went in there because he had a relationship breakdown. He thought, I want to know my part in that. I want to know like, I want to go over what happened in my childhood. I want to look better myself. Man's is going, that is sexy. That man is a sexy boy. That man is a macho man. Like, honestly, this whole patriarchal stupidity idea that macho is a physical thing, like, no. Mental and emotional strength is sexy and hot, and mental and emotional strength is strong. Physical strength is weak. Like, anyone can go and, like, take the roids and, push some things around that make things heavy but not everyone can go through the hard stuff and come out a decent human being so sorry I just stopped and like listened to those last few seconds and I pissed myself like do you ever just like do you listen to me just to laugh at me because fuck some of the shit I've dropped in this episode is unhinged (laughs) 
Could we just review the whole you fit my dick part from the start? And then this part where I've just said they take the roids and they push some stuff around that makes shit heavy or something. <laughs> if you are listening and like pissing yourself, laugh at me like, bitch, I'm laughing too. Like, you gotta laugh. You gotta love. You gotta laugh. You gotta be like, be real, be human. Like, <laughs> freaking unhinge. And that's what I love. Can someone else like make a podcast that's got ADHD? Um, because I love ADHD podcasters because I love how unhinged and how real and open and twisted they are. I just, I think it's hilarious. I think, um, like proper bitches will be like, mm. oh, you meant to be a registered nurse. Registered nurses meant to talk like this. I'm, to say, I'm a health professional. I talk down to my patients because I have a bachelor degree and I'm a registered nurse and I've worked as a mental health practitioner and I'm a specialist in mental health and I'm meant to like talk down to y'all and just educate you and stand above you and go, mm, I'm educating you. So I'm a survivor, but I'm going to keep my own private business to myself and be so professional. Like, bitch be for real <laughs> anyway on that note <laughs> i'm going because i just think it's time <laughs> goodbye have a nice day stay safe or else oh that sounded angry stay safe stay safe or else i'm gonna be upset because i don't want you to not be safe you're beautiful human beings and you deserve the world bye love you bye